There were tactical disagreements about the boldness of approaches soliciting donations. I was told, and I'm paraphrasing, by asking for X dollars right now, you will prevent 10X dollars down the road. That advice ran contrary to everything I knew to be true in my 13 years of fundraising. Um, but that conflict was even more fundamental and essentially boiled down to this. And my vision, I'm going to paraphrase Howard Rourke, the architect, quote, I don't have, I don't build in order to have donors. I have donors in order to build. That's what I believed. And I felt like we had a conflict of visions. We measure our success in terms of what we produce, not just in terms of our wallets. That was a pretty fundamental conflict, I felt. The day prior, I had informed him in front of his colleagues that he, if he wasn't willing to follow my lead, he'd be shown the door. I tried to deal with it privately, but I was unsuccessful, and the disagreement boiled over publicly in a staff meeting. The next day, this individual refused to resign, so I fired him. Later that same day, that's Feb Thursday, February 2nd, a few days after the 50 million views Pfizer videos, I was informed by a different officer of Project Veritas that he would go to the board in a few hours from that moment and have an emergency vote to restructure this company, receiving an agenda in my email while I was sitting on an airplane tarmac with the doors closing. The, the meeting was scheduled for the moment that my plane landed in Nashville. It became clear to me in that moment I would be removed from my position at Project Veritas by the time I landed at my destination. So our mission continues on. I'm not done. The mission will perhaps take on a new name and it may be no longer called Veritas, Project Veritas. I'll need a bunch of people around me and I'll make sure, I'll make sure you know how to find me. So with that, I'm going to collect my things. I'm going to load them into my car and I hope to see some of you soon. Welcome to Teaching Liberty. I'm Stephanie Edmonds. And as you have just seen, Project Veritas and James O'Keefe are no more. That's right. James O'Keefe, the person who founded the company, he was the CEO, he was the board president, has been run out by the board from his own company. For most of us, this comes as a huge surprise and brings up many questions. Where is this coming from? Project Veritas, by all accounts, is a huge success. With their latest video being of the Pfizer employee, Jordan Walker, caught on hidden camera, divulging details of research and development around the company's COVID vaccine. I don't think anybody thinks that Project Veritas can be Project Veritas without James O'Keefe, and perhaps that's the point. There was some outside force or forces that came, took over the board to oust James O'Keefe in hopes that Project Veritas will be no more, James O'Keefe will be no more, and this type of reporting will be something of the past. I'm not really sure how this happened or why this happened, but I am pretty sure that Project Veritas is not Project Veritas without James O'Keefe and that James O'Keefe will not be stopped. That's really all the information we have for now. We'll have to wait for more details to come out. We'll have to see where Project Veritas goes. We'll have to see what James O'Keefe's next move is. So I'll definitely be eagerly watching and waiting to see. I actually started to record this video a couple weeks ago, right after that Pfizer employee video with Jordan Walker came out and before all of this craziness started going down with James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. And I still think that analysis has a lot of value despite the news cycle moving on and these latest revelations, I still hear people referring to this video to the way that vaccines are developed and the pharmaceutical industry in general. So the way that we're thinking about it, don't tell anyone what's going on. You gotta publish your own title. You gotta publish your own title. Okay, bro. So um, the way we're working is like, we put them in the virus in these monkeys. Okay. And then we successively like cause them to keep infecting each other. And we collect serial samples from them. And then the ones that are more infectious, like the virus, we'll put them in another monkey and just constantly actively mutate it. And in this video, we are going to be making sense of this Project Veritas video. 
Is the video legit? Can we trust Project Veritas? Does this guy even know what he's talking about or is he just showing off for a date? We are going to ask all the hard questions because even though I generally do trust Project Veritas and I generally do like their content, I believe it is most important to question our own bias. And I think I do a pretty good job of filtering various perspectives from across the internet, putting them together and making a little bit more sense out of these videos, trying to cut through some of the sensationalism, trying to have those tough conversations with people who might not really want to talk about these things. And if you agree, definitely go ahead, hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos or when I go live like I do on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And definitely leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this video and any other topics or events you want me to cover and break down. And today I'm rocking the schools are essential tea. So you can get that and more over at teachingliberty.org. So let's talk about this video. I'm sure, of course, you are familiar with the work of James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. They have undercover agents who go out, go on dates with people in various industries, positions of power, and do investigative journalism, get people into conversations revealing less than, uh, let's say, Information that people don't want out there and that, of course, is not easy to come by. That's why you have to go undercover and do these types of things. Now, we can have a conversation about whether that type of journalism is ethical or unethical. I personally think it's not only ethical, but necessary. But that's a conversation for another video. If you want to talk about it, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Anyways, as you saw in the clip that I played at the beginning, we have a young man who is on a date and he is talking about his work at Pfizer. Pfizer ultimately is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that is not what we say to the public. No. Don't tell anyone this story. You gotta publish your own story. You gotta publish your own We're exploring, like, now, you know how the virus keeps mutating? Yeah. Well, one of the things we're exploring is, like, why don't we just mutate it ourselves so we can put up, we can create undefeatably developed new vaccines, right? So we have to do that. If we're gonna do that, though, there's a risk of, like, as you could imagine, no one wants to be having a pharma company mutating fucking viruses. It be, like, very controlled to make sure that this virus that you mutate doesn't create something that, like, you know, it goes everywhere. Something Which crazy. Suspect, is the way that the virus started in Wuhan. To be honest, like, it's, it makes no sense if this virus popped out of nowhere. Like, yeah, I know. It sounds like gain of function to me. It's definitely not gain of function. It sounds like it is. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. The directed evolution is very different. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to do gain of function research with the viruses. Like, yeah. They recommend not. But you do, like, these, like, selected directional mutations to try to see if you make more potent. Yeah. So there, there is research I'm learning about that. I don't know how that's going to work. There might not be any more outbreaks. It's like, Jesus Christ. So the way that we're thinking about it, like, don't tell anyone this building. You got to publish your own title. You got to publish your own title. Okay, bro. So um, the way it would work is like, we put them in the virus in these monkeys. Okay. And then we successively, like, cause them to keep infecting each other. And we collect serial samples from them. And then the ones that are more infectious, like the virus, we'll put them in another monkey. And you just constantly actively mutate it. That's one way. Okay. Or you can even do like directed like simulation, which like we turn off the up. And then you just sample what the different like um, like uh, proteins on the surface of the virus look like over time. Okay. So then you can see the mutation and you cannot force it to mutate in a certain way you want. Okay. But you have to be like very controlled to make sure that this virus that you mutate doesn't create something that, like, you know, it goes everywhere. For all government officials, it's pretty good for the industry to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> It's bad for everyone else in America. Why is it bad for everybody else? Because if the regulators who have to approve our drugs know that once they stop being a regulator, they want to go work for the company, then I got to be as hard for the company. Now, interestingly, many of these things sound like statements of the so-called conspiracy theorists. However, as we're going to see, I'm going to provide evidence for the fact that this guy works with or for Pfizer. So... Is he just making these things up to show off for his date or is he sharing things that are legitimately going on at Pfizer? Like I said, I always start with those hard questions, particularly when things confirm my bias. 
when things I'm seeing like, yup, that's definitely true. Those are the times when you should double down and really ask those hard questions. And so I'm going to start with a clip from Rising where they show a lot of skepticism towards the work of James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, and this video. So, so I did watch all 10 minutes of what James O'Keefe released on Twitter. He says a lot of things that, again, are alarming to people who are concerned about this. The complicating factor is that maybe this is boastful or exaggerated or he's wrong because he's drinking with, with a stranger or with someone who thinks he is a friend. And, and also, we don't, I don't know for sure what his role is in the company. He could be exaggerating his role in the company. I don't know for sure that he works there. Those are all the things that I'm less certain about. What he's saying, if... You know, it's a big if true kind of deal. Thankfully, there are those who've done the research and due diligence to confirm that indeed this person does work for Pfizer and who've given us the background and context we need to understand what guided evolution is and how it has traditionally been used by pharmaceutical companies to develop things like the flu vaccine. And for this, I'm going to go to one of my favorite YouTube news journalists, Kim Iverson. Project Veritas actually does a lot of their due diligence, but it's good for us to do due diligence on top of the due diligence, right? Um, even though Project Veritas often wins their legal battles and they are, uh, you know, what they put out there is often very truthful. Now, it might not be the whole truth. It might be a snippet of it, but it is actually quite truthful, no matter what you may have heard about Project Veritas. This is Brian O'Shea. He did a really fantastic substack on this where he looked into who Jordan Tristan is. Because one big question when you see this video is, is this guy legit? Right? Couldn't anybody just say, oh, yeah, I'm, a, you know, I'm the CEO of the North Pole. And so let me tell you all about the inner work of the, you know, of Santa's elves. I guess anybody could kind of say something like that. So you have to verify that this person is who they are. What's going on right now is if you, if you look for him on the internet, so if you do any sort of searching for any of this that's gone on, for Jordan, Tristan Walker or anything, you're going to come up with nothing. So when you do the searches, they basically scrubbed this guy from the internet as soon as Project Veritas released this video. But when you use the Wayback Machine, which allows you to look at websites before they scrub information, you could find who this guy is. I've done that before, the Wayback Machine, go look things up, people up, look things up that I posted and took down from the internet even in the past. So definitely, if you don't know about the Wayback Machine, go check it out. Yes, and it turns out that he is in fact, or at least he was, I don't know anymore after this video, but he was a current director of the worldwide worldwide R&D strategic operations and mRNA scientific planning at Pfizer. He began that job in October of 2019, all the way until now, or maybe until yesterday. So this man, Jordan Tristan Walker, is indeed who Project Veritas claims he is. And next, I'm going to play a clip of Kim giving us a little bit more context to understand directed evolution. And while definitely something that we should be asking a lot of questions about and hope that they're being very cautious, it's not actually something that is out of the norm for pharmaceutical companies to do when they're developing vaccines, such as the flu vaccine. Directed evolution is the mimic of the natural evolution cycle in a laboratory setting. So what they're claiming they're doing, what the scientists claim they're doing when they do directed evolution is they're trying to get ahead to see how is this thing going to evolve. So you've got COVID, you know it's evolving. Well, let's, a better example, let's say the flu. So you have the flu and every year the flu evolves and a new strain comes out and that's why they say get your updated flu shot. And what they do when they when they make the flu shot is they're trying to figure out what's going to be the strain of flu that's circulating around this year. And they try to guess based on directed evolution. They're guessing, what do we think the flu virus that was out this year, what do we think it's gonna to mutate to so we can make a vaccine for that and get it out to the public. So what he's explaining is that Pfizer's now doing that for COVID. So there you have it. Directed evolution is not the same thing as gain of function research. And it's something that pharmaceutical companies have been using for decades in the development of annual vaccines like the flu vaccine. And now they're just exploring using that same model for COVID. That being said, I, of course, still think that this is a huge deal. Pfizer doesn't want this information out there. That is obvious from their reaction to this event and the statements that they made of 
non-denial denial, which we'll get to in a second. I do think it helps cut through some of the sensationalism and bring them down to a place where we can have an actual conversation where we can reasonably understand how we can use this information to correct any wrongs that might have been done in the past and course correct for where we're going in the future so that we can ask the hard questions and really know what we're dealing with here. And so with that in mind, I want to end with one last take on this situation. And that is from this substack right here, Eugippius. I never know if I'm saying it right. Eugippus? Eugippius? Somebody let me know in the comments down below how you say that. He is from Germany, so I like always getting that international perspective. And this beginning part, just kind of giving some of the context, background information, going over what is said in the video. And now here is his analysis, which I think is very valuable. Or maybe it's a her. I'm not sure. Is him, her? Am I using the wrong pronouns here? Either way. Let's let's get on with it. Although Walker is clearly drunk and a little incoherent in the video, none of these remarks are improbable or surprising. Directed evolution of viruses is a real thing that virologists do. We just went over this. Rhesus and macaque monkeys are standard animal models in SARS-2 research. So another source confirming that, yeah. Maybe this guy was a little drunk and he wasn't being the most articulate, but what he is saying maps on to how we know things actually work in this industry. So then what this actually reveals is that Pfizer BioNTech bivalent vaccine has been a total flop. And so I agree with this to an extent there. If it wasn't a flop, people would be up taking the vaccine and they wouldn't really be worried about getting ahead of it. However, we know that they do want to make an annual yearly seasonal thing. That's what they do with the flu vaccine. So I think they would have done this either way. It probably just, um, it's probably just about the timeline. So he says uptake is lower than ever. And within months of its rollout, BA five infections receded in the face of what will probably soon be the new dominant lineage XBB 1.5. Because it takes so long to research and produce updated vaccines, you're always vaccinated against yesterday's variant. Vaccinator hysteria, however, has created an enormous global market for on target COVID boosters. So you better believe there are people out there right now trying to get ahead of the evolutionary curve. One way to do this would be to infect bivalent vaccinated animal models with current virus lineages and observe which escape mutations emerge. Walker appears to say that Pfizer is considering a research program along these lines and that other scientists are already doing this work. So within his analysis, they're kind of rehashing some of the stuff that we went over with that Kim Iverson video with a little bit more specificity. So again, not trying to undercut the importance of this, but really cut through that sensationalism and get to a reasonable conversation around this. And so he goes on to say in this article, I'll be honest, I don't think what Walker describes is necessarily dangerous. The virus is already training itself against vaccine elicited antibodies and billions of people. That's a powerful force that I'm not sure Pfizer scientists have any hope of outpacing. Were such a were such a tweaked virus to escape a laboratory, it would just have the antibody evading properties of many other strains. We might not even recognize it as a lab product. Still, Walker's revelations are significant, right? This is what I'm saying. And so it goes on to say, I'll be honest. I don't think what Walker describes is necessarily dangerous. The virus is already training itself against vaccine elicited antibodies and billions of people. That's a powerful force that I'm not sure Pfizer scientists have any hope of outpacing. Were such to tweak virus to escape a laboratory, it would just have the antibody evading properties of many other strains. We might not even recognize it as a lab product. Still, Walker's revelations are significant, right? Both things can be true. The Project Veritas video might not be quite as sensational as we might have thought, and it can also still be very 
significant, for they reveal how easily demand for vaccines becomes pressure to tinker with viral evolution. I'll read that again. Walker's revelations are significant for they reveal how easily demand for vaccines becomes pressure to tinker with viral evolution. Similar research on potential pandemic pathogens that are poorly adapted to humans would indeed be truly dangerous. So the work isn't necessarily dangerous with SARS-CoV-2. There's lots of natural immunity out of the world, lots of different circulating strains. However, take this same practice with a virus where there's not so much natural immunity and there is perhaps a larger problem. This article goes on just a little bit more, which I think is worthwhile to read here and wrap up this video. Hours after Project Veritas released the video, Jordan Walker was thoroughly scrubbed from Google search results and social media. This was the first tell that their work had embarrassed the pharmaceutical giant. Aside from this tepid debunking at Newsweek and segments on Tucker Carlson tonight, The story has been totally ignored by the American press, which is a second important clue. And these are things that we go over all the time, especially on my Saturday night show when we're going through big news headlines from the week. What are the tells? What are the giveaways? What are the red flags that you should really be like, hmm, something isn't right here. I should look more deeply into this. And when they start scrubbing things from the internet or totally ignoring them or putting out debunking, you know, you should probably be looking the other direction. Let's see, where were we? The general blackout has encouraged both the Twitter Pfizer fan club and many on our own side of the debate to argue that the event was staged or that Project Veritas has fallen victim to some kind of disinformation trap. And yes, I think you always have to consider these possibilities, especially when it comes to the type of work Project Veritas does. But in all situations, you should be running these multiple storylines and you should also be using evidence to eliminate the ones that are least likely and identify the ones that are most likely. And over and over again, it seems like Project Veritas is working towards the truth. And that's what this author goes on to show that really, if you look at the facts, it seems that this was a real situation that really happened. So one, Jordan Walker's identity and his affiliation with Pfizer are easily verified. We already went over that earlier in the video. And then there's Walker's title, Director, Worldwide R&D Strategic Operations and mRNA Scientific Planning does not indicate that he's a senior Pfizer executive or even that he's really especially important. He's a mid-level functionary with a consultant background. That said, his idiocy and lack of self-control should surprise nobody, given the stunning and ongoing incompetence of the entire mass vaccination effort. Three, the partnership between BioNTech and Pfizer nowhere stipulates that Pfizer will not conduct research on the SARS-2 virus. Pfizer has far more extensive laboratory facilities than BioNTech and a serious financial interest in their mRNA COVID jab. So it makes sense that they'd contemplate this work. And then there's Walker's fairly hilarious reaction. I'll play a little clip of it right here. Hey there. Is this seat taken? You work for Pfizer. My question for you is why does Pfizer want to hide from the public the fact that they're mutating the COVID viruses? Is this real life? I'm literally a liar. I was trying to impress a person on a date by lying. And this please, is please, absurd. Please don't touch me. Well, this is not. No. Why the way? Why don't, are you doing don't this? Don't tell anybody. Someone who is just working at a company to literally yeah. help the public. Yeah. You yeah. up. You really did. Please read the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please unlock your door? No. Can you, no. Don't let them leave. Please unlock the door. Give me. Why is going on here? Please unlock. Please unlock the door. Stop. 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 Please unlock the door. Unlock the door. We're trying to get unlock the door. Unlock the door. So you can see Jordan doesn't take it very well. I mean, perhaps there are people arguing out there that it's staged, it looks totally made up. I don't think so. Looks like he's losing it in front of the camera and is just having a breakdown. He 
is scared of them and thinks they're a threat to him, but also doesn't want them to leave because he wants the police to come. It's very confusing. And then, of course, there's Pfizer's statement, their non-denial denial. Pfizer's statement read, allegations have recently been made related to gain of function and directed evolution research at Pfizer, and the company would like to set the record straight. In the ongoing development of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, Pfizer has not conducted gain of function or directed evolution research. Working with collaborators, we have conducted research where the original SARS-CoV-2 virus has been used to express the spike protein from new variants of concern. This work is undertaken once a new variant of concern has been identified by public health authorities. This research provides a way for us to rapidly assess the ability of an existing vaccine to induce antibodies that neutralize a newly identified variant of concern. We then make this data available through peer-reviewed scientific journals and use it as one of the steps to determine whether a vaccine update is required. Note that Pfizer do not deny Jordan Walker's statements, which were not about past work, but about possible future research, nor do they deny that Walker was their employee or directly address anything else that he said. I hope this video has helped you make sense of Project Veritas's work in general and specifically with this Pfizer video featuring Jordan Walker. If so, make sure you've hit that like button and you're subscribed to the channel and you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. Plus, I post short videos on daily news topics and Liberty Ideas over on my Instagram and Twitter. So definitely follow me over there and drop a message. Remember, I do lives every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we talk about the big news headlines of the week. Drop a comment down below if there's somebody who you want me to collaborate with a topic or an event you want me to cover, or if you have a question or a comment about anything we talked about in this video. To support my work directly, head over to teachingliberty.org and become a paid subscriber today. Until next time, keep living free. <music>